Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Helena. I'm a mindful painting teacher based in London and owner of Artanda, a mindful painting art school in London. On my website, artanda.co.uk, you'll find a blog post with all of the equipment that you need for this session and also some different resources, videos and photographs for you as well. Today we're going to be looking at the subject of a robin and how a robin is really a symbol of hope. We're going to start our practice with a meditation before moving on to create two watercolour artworks. And we're going to start by really thinking about that idea of hope. The robin is there singing its beautiful song, even when it seems that everything else is quite quiet in the winter. The robin sings for us throughout the winter and leads us into spring. He's always so chirpy and optimistic in the way that he flies and sings. Make sure you're sitting somewhere comfortable. You may be sitting on your studio chair and you may have all four corners of your feet pressing into the ground so you feel the secure ground beneath you. With your eyes closed, just watch your breath coming in and out, but don't try and change it in any way. Hope. Think of the robin bird. singing its sweet tune in the early morning it's there welcoming in the day when it's cold and frosty outside the robin bird keeps singing reminding us of the bird song of warmer months This time, as you breathe in, think of the word hope with your inhale. And imagine as if hope is filling up your lungs. As you exhale, savour the word. and let it just sit there with you. Inhale and think of the word hope. And when you're ready to exhale, just notice how hope stays within you. Even though you're exhaling air, the hope is still there. We're going to do just 10 rounds of breath each time, imagining hope filling up our lungs and then as we exhale, just enjoying that hope remaining warm inside of us.
Okay, when you're ready, just gently open your eyes. And with that feeling of hope, we're going to start our painting practice. I'm going to start by mixing the beautiful orangey red hues that make up the red breast of my robin. I'm mixing a bit of French vermilion. Uh, this is the same, the tube and the pan are the same ones, so you'll see me in the video using a little bit of both, but they're the same colour. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of lemon yellow um, and also a bit of Sennelier yellow and I'm using tube paints but sometimes you'll see me using my pan paints both of the same colour um, and you can use both for this practice there's different qualities to the tube paints and different qualities to the pan paints but both work really really well. I've mixed together here um, obviously a yellow and a red to make the orange hue of the robin's red breast my red that I've chosen, my French Vermilion, already is leaning slightly more on the orange side and that Sennelier yellow is also leaning slightly towards the orange side, so both of them are quite warm hues. When you're colour mixing, it can be helpful to add a little bit of the complementary hue to the opposite colour on the colour wheel. Uh, it kind of um, lowers slightly the saturation of your colours and it also just helps you to get a better match. So if I'm choosing kind of orangey red hues, then a bluey green is the colour which is complementary on my colour wheel. To keep things nice and vibrant, because I want to keep that glow of the robin red breast, rather than mixing in a green or a blue hue, I have gone for a lemon yellow hue, which is a slightly, very slightly green yellow mixing a slightly green yellow in with my slightly warm yellow is adding that element of the complementary colour in in a very subtle way while still maintaining the luminosity and glow of the colour. So I've mixed a sort of light orange, a slightly dark orange and then an even darker slightly more ready orange um, and now I'm moving on to those earthy tones that I can see within my robin so the browns and the grey colours, but I'm noticing that there are still those underlying hues even within the kind of more black or brown colours. I um, mean, you can see that on my colour wheel here, that to get a closer match, you can add into your brown pigment, into your black pigment, perhaps a little bit of blue or perhaps a little bit of green or red or whatever it is, um, to try and get that earthy match. So our first painting activity is to take one of those colours and we're going to try in a continuous line, one gestural line, to try and get the form and the motion and the energy of our robin. So it's almost a little bit like calligraphy, the way that I'm making this line and I'm enjoying the motion and the energy of that line trying to get that vibrance, that hopeful chirpiness of the robin. And even if at first my line doesn't scream a photorealistic image of a robin, I know that within this beautiful tangled web of lines, I'll be able to pick out and identify those lines which really do have that quality of a robin and put it together. So often I've had students who got to this point and they think, oh my goodness, it looks nothing like a robin, and then start the inner monologue of saying, I'm no good at art, what is it, what have I made today? But actually, just see, to get a fast, a fleeting sketch, it's not, you know, going to go in the National Gallery, but it's quite an energetic little sketch of a robin, which I think has something of the quality of um, a chirpy, happy, optimistic robin. Even just adding that pencil line, which is quite a broken line, uh, there's not a lot there, but already starting to see the form of the robin a lot more clearly. And there's my very, very quick little sketch of a robin. Um, 
and it just starts my painting practice with a bit of energy that it doesn't matter if we make a mistake that actually those um, extra lines and those bleeding colors can add that optimism that fleeting springiness of a robin into our artwork so now i'll start my second drawing this drawing method is relying really on muscle memory. I'm making a line. The reason I'm moving my hand then off to the left hand side is because I'm making the line on my photocopy and then I'm transferring the motion of that line onto my paper. So I'm relying on muscle memory. If I can draw that line on my photocopy, then I can draw the same line on my paper. And I'm actually not having to think too much about what I'm doing or really think at all. Instead of worrying about those lines in terms of my drawing, I'm making my focus and my meditation on that word hope. So each line I make, I'm keeping it with the rhythm of that mantra, hope. So I'm making the line with muscle memory and I'm applying it to my paper. So I'm making the mark on my photocopy, hope. Then I'm applying it to my paper, hope. The same motion, uh, the same line, just repeated and the same mantra repeated as well. Now that I've drawn it out, I'm just working from the lighter tones that I already mixed, the lighter colours, uh, just down to the darker colours. Some of those colours I am making even lighter still with extra water. And I am working with quite a watery mix here um, and holding my paintbrush quite high up. And that is to, to allow the, the colour and the paintbrush to kind of guide me where it needs to go. So I'm not colouring in and I'm not trying to control it too much. I'm just trying to enjoy making the marks and try to enjoy keeping that hopeful, optimistic springiness to my marks. It's all about the way that I'm approaching my practice and the quality of the practice, rather than trying to get a masterpiece at the end of it. As I was working on my painting, I was reminded of a few Robin poems, which I have shared in the link below, and which you might want to include as part of your practice. And also a piece of music you may like to listen to. Um, it's a beautiful cello piece harmonizing with the birds. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed your mindful painting practice. You can find out more about our Tanda mindful painting at artanda.co.uk.